Morning. And again, uh, Good morning and welcome. Bryony Thomas here, live with Alison Edgar, the entrepreneur's godmother, to have a chat with everyone about our fantastic event top tips. Good morning, Alison. How are you? Good morning, Bryony. I am on top of the world. Fantastic. Now, I'm just going to do that really weird thing of, of looking at myself on another device to check that we are indeed live into the group, which we are, which is fantastic. I can now put that away. I always like to check on another device. We we'll sit here just chatting away into the ether. Well, it wouldn't be the first time I've done this and not recorded or not gone live, Bryony. So well done you for checking. I've hit record. It says live on Facebook. I've checked on my other device. So there's a tip for you. When running online events, double check. <laughs> it says it online so, now too, so we're fine. <laughs> excellent. So um, the reason we're here today is that this time next week on the 26th of June, Alice and I will be together in the same room, which oh. will be fantastic. Um, we are both the keynote speakers at the Maidstone and, Medsto uh, Maidstone and Medway Business Show, which is run by Grow Kent. I shall be opening the day and Alison should be closing the day. So let's, let's ask first, Alison, why, uh, why did the Maidstone event appeal to you? So I've actually um, done it before. Uh, they did it in a different location, but I've worked with the Grow Kent team and it was a really brilliant event. Uh, they, they, it was a full house and previously they, you know, they had great speakers. So when I did the last one, it was Warren Knight and Steve Clark. So um, I was really keen to go back because they're a great audience, they're great learners, they're really interactive. Um, and of course, sharing a great lineup with yourself, why would I not go back? Indeed. Well, it's one of those events, isn't it, that when um, you look at the lineup and you think that's, you know, they've, they've got some really good people, some really good sponsors. And I think they've actually themed it really nicely as well for businesses to get what they need a lot. It's all sales and marketing themed um, with the addition of a cyber security um, session, which is obviously top of uh, moving to the top of the agenda these days. So I suppose one of the first top tips about choosing events to appear at is looking at what's on the agenda. Yeah, for sure. I think it's so, so, so important because um, I think because they're looking at that, you know that the people in the room will be actually interested in what you've yes. got to say. Sometimes if you go to say something that's all AI or, you know, something else and you're kind of extra to the wheel like when you're on the outskirts, people aren't so interested in your topic. So I think, again, when you know it's a you know, top tip for speakers, if you know it's something around your actual um, specialism that it's, it's a great thing to be involved in yeah but one of the one of the things that we do with all of our clients is get people to understand what is their umbrella theme and then kind of have three core messages beneath that and I think when you're looking at events providing it speaks to the theme yeah um, then then it's going to be you know, the people in the audience are going to be relevant as you say and, and interested in in what you're doing so a good first top tip the other thing that appealed to me about the event um, was that it's it's an event within a community so what Carol and her team have done over many years is nurture a community of business owners in the Kent area which is very different from events um, that kind of bring together random strangers um, yeah. there are going to be people they know each other aren't there yeah it's really good and actually I spoke at an event recently down in um, the New Forest and there's another community like that and it just you feel so welcome. And I think that's another thing, you know, about Bro Kent as well. You feel really welcome. And I think already I've had messages from people who heard me speak the last time who are coming to hear me speak again, which is, yeah. and it's always, you know, as a speaker going into a venue, it's always nice to have a few friendly faces, especially when it's at the other end of the country. Yeah, absolutely. So they're kind of ready to learn, aren't they? And um, in what you've just said, there's another top tip, which is connect with people in advance of the event. 
Yeah, definitely. And we've got people as well. So there's two sides to my business for the people that haven't met me before. I've got the Entrepreneur's Godmother, which will work with the startups, micros, owner managed businesses. So the small companies. Then the other side of my business, Sales Coaching Solutions, works with sales teams. So what did happen, we've had a couple of inquiries from Kent, but they've never actually met me before. Um, and they've been dragging out a little bit for various reasons, like in on sales coaching solutions side a lot is to do with the, the this team being in place at the time because you don't want to if you're going to recruit you don't want to do the training at the wrong time so Absolutely. another great thing is that I've been back on in contact with them and saying look I'm at this event in Kent be fantastic to see you so a couple of people who I didn't meet at the previous one but were inquiries from Kent I've also invited so uh, and again, you know yourself, Brian, people buy people. And if you've heard somebody or met somebody, you're more likely to close the sale. So Absolutely I think that's right. another top tip is, you know, I was going to say rummage. Maybe that's not the right word. Strategically contact your LinkedIn connections in the geographic of where you're going. And that's another thing that, you know, we have done not cold call we're obviously linked into them but we've warmed it up by saying it'd be fantastic to meet you at go Kent. i'm speaking at this event on this time on my topic and again we've had good interaction back from that as well yeah it's a really important tip because i think often people think about events as lead generation we will get onto that as a topic in a moment but what you're saying really and um wholeheartedly agree to turning things upside down working bottom up is invite local clients you know, yeah. if you already know them, then invite your clients who are in the area and then have a look at um, kind of warmer prospects in that nurturing piece. Because yeah. I've found at events, sometimes just having a coffee corner um, and sitting down with people that you haven't had the opportunity to have a, an in-person chat with because it's yeah. local to them. So I've, I've done so similarly, um, I, you know, I'm making really good use of being up there the night before. I'm having a meal with with, um, you know, potential uh, joint venture partner during the day. We've got a number of local people, people who we know are interested coming along. And a few of our um, recent we, we have our water type marketing experts network and we've got a really nice group coming together in the southeast. So, of course, they're all coming along. Um, yeah. Which means we'll also take the opportunity to get photos together, you know, yeah. make use of all being in one space oh, for sure and great for brand recognition again in other parts of the country and i think the other thing that i would and you'll have this as well for some of the again the, the bigger companies that you want to work with it's also that thing that people like people in their local area or the geographic and you think oh if she's got to travel from the southwest to kent she's going to put her price up and it will cost me more whereas i can get a local supplier cheaper but if they can see that you're willing to travel to events like grow kent then again it just gives you more of a a competitive edge over people in the local area yeah, definitely. So really good for um, client loyalty, um, lead nurturing and conversion, as well as lead generation. So let's move on to lead generation, because I think often events and exhibitions, because uh, we, we both have a stand as part of um, being the keynote speaker there. And stands can be a lot of effort. Um, you know, let's not underestimate this. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think, and it's one of the biggest um, faux pas I see people making, especially, I mean, I, I did the business show at Excel in London, and it was two days, and the footfall was 30,000. I mean, it was it was the biggest show that we've ever done. That's a lot of print, if you give everyone a leaflet. <laughs> well, do you know, we, we tend, and again, I think it's an interesting thing about leaflets, which again, fits into your marketing side, that some people will use that. But again, a lot of people just put them straight in the bin. And it's to me, it's about getting the data inward rather than giving the information outward that tends to be more, um, we get better conversions from that. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Agree with you. And I think we, we the other thing which we did, which was a big investment, um, but has paid off, we've had ROI back, is we sponsored the main stage. I saw that um, on social media. So the fact yeah. that I wasn't there, Alison, and I can describe it. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, and I wasn't in the room, so this shows the power of social media from an event. Even though we're at Grow Kent, we will be all over social, won't we, Alison? Well, for sure. Yeah, So which which increases the reach of, um, of your event. But Alison at the business show had the entire seminar space was pink because 
Pink is Alison's colour. I've promised not to wear pink next week. Um, and the whole, as you went into the seminar stand, it was branded all around the top. You had to walk through the, the entrepreneur godmother door. I mean, th- there was no doubting that you were there, Alison. No, and, and you know, one of our things, we did the business show um, two years ago. We launched the godmother, your entrepreneur's godmother at the business show. And it was really interesting because my whole theory is it's better to be bold than boring. People might not like bold, but they will remember bold. And I think that's where um, it was really interesting because we had people like Brad Barton. uh, We had um, Stephen Smith, the founder of Poundland. We had like all the top keynotes. But what happened is we're in the video because they videoed all of that. So my branding, my face is all over every video on that stage. So again, I think, you know, it's what, sometimes with exhibitions and I think a lot of people go oh I did that one and it didn't work but sometimes it's not necessarily the there and then it's the brand awareness and especially for us going to Kent where again you know you've got more of a national reach because of you the way your business model works but for me under the entrepreneur's godmother it is predominantly a lot of our stuff is southwest or London but we never really reach over to Grow Kent so that's why um, you know what's my expectation do I expect on the day I'm going to sell thousands of pounds no not really but are thousands of people going to know my brand name and what I do and when it comes time are they going to buy from me yeah they would choose me over a competitor and I think a lot of it is doing exhibitions like like Grow Kent it's a lot of subliminal advertising and long-term um, you know, getting your your brand out there. Yeah. So there were three tips that I had just to summarise um, what Alison and I have been discussing. So the first is to um, extend the reach of an event, even if it's regional, by by going in a bit crazy on social um, and having the branding such that you show up in the background of other people's social shots and videos so that the um, kind of the branding hit extends beyond the day. Um, And then the other thing that I've heard there um, from what you've just talked about is think strategically about where you're having these events kind of geographically. And I would um, just add into that, that if you are going to be doing geographic events, build into your data, um, into your inbound data somewhere where people tell you where they are in the country, because it can be really helpful for your email marketing to be able to identify within your data, which can, uh, you know, you can do that through their, um, their web websites etc getting their company addresses so that you can identify where people are and invite them along now we did just mention that we both believe that the best thing to do is to have inbound leads at um at events and we've both put together some phenomenal offers that we believe will get people coming along to to our stand so what's um what what's What's on offer from you on this on the 26th of June? So we um not even just on the 26th of June. So I've got a joint venture partner as well in the e-learning space. So we do a lot of online courses, um, which are paid for courses. But what we've done is we've created some absolutely top drawer short courses because I think sometimes with a lot of the online courses people can go into overwhelm because they think it's too much so we've done them really short really concise one on starting a business and one in how to sell and they last no longer than about 15-20 minutes but the top tips are brilliant so and again that's the other benefit that if you have got something electronic like that people have to subscribe into it they then move into the mailing list which again you know the, the, the mailing list is key to anything that you want to do um so you other- have two free taster courses one on starting up a business and one on selling yeah and the other thing that we will be doing is we will be doing a draw around um copies of the the free the book the, the secrets of successful sales um and they can have that either the paperback copy the kindle edition or my new audio book that i Ooh. have just narrated which has absolutely been back breakingly difficult as a dyslexic because I keep adding words taking words away and making the whole thing up so although I wrote the book it's been really hard so we'll be giving away free copies but we'll do that as a prize draw which again is another top tip that and and not just getting the data but you know obviously now with GDPR making sure they're double opted in but people that are genuinely want yes your free things yes. not just any free things yes. because otherwise your data just get I call it dirty data and well, we you end up with data of people who like champagne don't you which is yeah. all well and good if you sell champagne 
Yeah, and I think that's a lot of people make that faux pas, I think, at events that, you know, the champagne or the chocolates or the whatever, and they just get, I call them the, you know, the pen pinchers. The, the, yeah, the hunters. absolutely. In, interested, and I think that's another top tip that whatever you're doing, make it relevant to what you do, because yeah. if they're not interested in what you do, they won't put their card in or they won't yeah. contact you. And to be honest, they're just wasting your time because they're dirty data in your clean database and nobody absolutely. wants dirty data. No, so we, we call this invitation information. And one of the key tips that we give people is to always ensure that that invitation invites a conversation about something that is relevant. So on topic and on theme. So we, we have a, a, we also have a, a, a few things that we're doing on the day. So um, everybody who's coming along to Grow Kent can get a free digital copy of Water Type Marketing. And the first uh, the first 25 people to come along get a signed copy of the paperback. Now, we don't have an audio. I'll tell you why I don't have an audio book. It's because there are so many pictures <laughs> you There's a diagram about every three pages, yeah, which makes audio description a little bit tricky. Um, so come along. We're on stand 51 and 57. Alice and I have combined our stands. I know 51 and 57 don't sound like they're next to each other, but they are. Um, and we will be there together. So come along. You can pick up your free copy of Watertight Marketing. You can enter Alison's drawer to pick up her copy of Secrets of Successful Sales, which I've um, also read and is fantastic. They go together brilliantly um, as books. The other thing we're doing is we're giving away. Um, so if you come over to the stand and chat to Lou Johnson, who will be with me, um, you can if you sign up on the day with us, you can get our free 90 minute guided touchpoint leak assessment. So for anyone who's read Watertight Marketing, this is the um, it's the part in the book that helps you to prioritize because there are so many things one could do. But what should you do um, so we have a tool that helps people to organize all their very many ways that they could spend money on marketing to work out what they should be doing first um, so there's a 90 minute video guided um, touch point league assessment if you come over to the stand we can sign you up for that on the day um, so normally 95 pounds on our site so great great offer um, and we will both be there so come and come and have a little so social selfie with us yeah and you know it's really interesting because obviously we follow each other on social media and I knew your offer before so again I think that's another great top tip is get it out on social and people will um, already start to flock to your stand so many people don't do the the pre-organization and you know the other thing we haven't obviously talked about is the follow-up and that's where the fortune is in the follow-up and for me again it's that that Com combination between sales and marketing that puts the ball in the hole and I think again the follow-up email but still picking up the phone is the next step to to closing those sales and building those relationships and I think picking up the phone is so important it, I mean it's so important there's and don't do it six months later you know it needs to be whilst they can remember you and of course neither Alison or I are easy to forget but <laughs> Um, it is important that your follow up is timely because people are busy. People yeah. are busy. So as the sales expert here, um, Alison, what would your recommended follow up be from someone who, for example, came and got the free copy of the book on the stand? So first of all, I think purpose is um, really important. And I think it's where people fall down in sales that they go and you go, how did you find the show? How did you find, what do you think of the book? Or, you know, the purpose of the call is to find out you've had a free copy of the book, Watertight Mar Marketing or Secrets of Successful Sales. What do you intend to do with it? What are the areas that you feel that you're struggling with? So again, it's not just, it's got to have a really clear purpose. And what I do is I tell them to set the table. So, you know, I just wanted to find out just a couple of minutes to ask you some questions. How does that sound to you, Brian? Oh, yeah, that's great. So what was it? What's the areas? And you're really then trying to, you know, we both know from the sales and marketing perspective, it's like bingo. You can only win the bingo when what you sell matches what the customer needs, not what the customer wants, but what the customer needs. And the only really, you know, to determine those leads are by the follow-up phone call and another one of my top tips you know if you do have a busy exhibition stand it's really important that you identify the wheat from the chaff because you can have the pen pinchers taking up all your time and your energy this is the thing with exhibitions energy has got to be at a high all the time which if it's a two-day show and you've been out for drinkies with clients the night before and you know it you it's really important. So again, this is a real gold dust tip. 
Um, and a lot of people, in fact, most people don't use it. So this is gold dust. So they have to get to the end to get to the gold dust. So when somebody does come on the stand, oh, wow, it's great to see you here in Kent. What was the reason you came to the exhibition? Because you know what? Then you'll find out, that, oh, I was just looking around or, oh, actually, I came to see you or actually, I came to see Bryony. All right. And what were you hoping to get at the end of it? You know, what were you looking to do? And then what you want to do is get your, you know, find out, um, you know, is there something there potentially as a client? So, you know, oh, yeah, I came to see you. Oh, what was it you wanted? It's really quite busy at the exhibition. What my suggestion is, we have a little 15 minute uh, Skype or phone call within the next few days. Um, where's your diary? So, again, the assumptive close is where's your diary? Let's get a date in the diary. And what that does, it saves your energy and your time. And you've got a good prospect to follow up on. Yeah. And rather than having to go through the cards at the end or the data at the end, you've already appointed the really hot ones. And I mean, they- 20 good appointments is better than 200 random business cards. Oh, for sure. And again, you know, make sure that when you put that appointment in for the follow up that you're given a calendar invite. So just say, oh, don't worry, Brownie, what I'll do is I'll just send you the calendar invite and then that's it and job done. Great. Well, it's really nice to speak to you. I'll speak to you later. And then you can politely move on to the next one. And especially, I mean, at the business show in London, we were cute literally we were cute and yeah. I had to, as a team make sure that we were doing that and, and that's how we got the ROI to be fair fantastic so I'm going to do a really quick summary of everything that Alice and I have chatted about so first of all we talked about um, choosing shows that are relevant to what you talk about we talked about branding your presence so if you're going to be doing it make sure that you set it up so that um, you show up in a way that is clear that is memorable that is bold We talked about going through your database, inviting clients, inviting prospects um, and doing both loyalty driving and nurturing. We've talked about extending the reach of your um, events by um, maximizing your social media activity whilst you're there. We've talked about generating inbound leads with relevant offers. Um, We we can all generate people who are interested in bubbly, um, but what we need is people who are interested in what you actually sell. Um, And we've talked about the energy on the stand, keeping that up, maintaining it. We're both, I've got two people coming along. You've got a colleague coming along. So you really need some help on the day and making sure that your follow-up is timely, pertinent, and ideally you get things booked in on the day. Yeah. These These are fantastic. Um, fantastic tips so let's close off by just um telling everybody what it is we're talking about so Alison when's your when's your keynote on the day um so I'm near the end I'm the closer um I think you probably know this better than me I think it's four o'clock around then about four it's late afternoon but ideally it would be good if people came before that because I can catch up with them before I go on stage and then they can hear me so I'll be we'll be there all day we're there from the night before so anytime at all but make sure they don't go off home early because I'm on the last slot yes it's uh, I think they've kept it so that people will stay all day because Alison's on at the end so I will be opening um the conference room there are some breakfast sessions before me there's a cyber security briefing and I think it's a, a LinkedIn briefing um I'll be kicking off the uh, conference day at 9 15 with a session called there's a hole in your bucket dear business um where we'll be talking about why really uh, the the stuff that the lead generation activity that people think of as marketing is often the last thing that a growing business should look at so I'll be doing that at 9 15 15 and then how why why not head on over to stand 51 and 57 where Alison and I will be hanging out um, with our teams giving away our goodies and having excellent conversations with people who want to grow their businesses to stand and with. signing our books absolutely that's the ultimate shot isn't it for an author yeah. it never gets boring 200 books down it's still not boring I mean it, it makes your hand hurt but <laughs> oh. Wonderful. Are there any other closing things that you'd like to say today, Alison? Uh, no, just uh, thank you so much. I'm a big fan of uh, watertight marketing and I do agree that the two books really complement each other really well because I think it's when sales and marketing work together that actually we make money. And that's why it's really important that people you know, take both, use, use both, both methodologies. 
And we are taking that to a practical extension by working together on our stands next week on the 26th of June in Maidstone. It's a free event to attend. So all you need to do is register um, and I will put the link in the comments um, to this video. So thank you for your time this morning, Alison. Really looking, I'm looking forward to the drive up almost as much as I am spending a day on the stand with you. So looking forward to that. Lots of love. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.